The internet, a technology business and consumers rely on is, please stand by, this video about network neutrality is still loading. Okay, it's an easy joke, but one that illustrates the importance of today's FCC ruling could play on business and consumers. For Tech Republic and ZDNet, I'm Dan Patterson with Jason Heiner, and today we'll break down net neutrality, the big issues, who it affects, and why this important issue matters. Uh, Jason, so uh, we do talk a lot about net neutrality, and in previous videos we've kind of defined what net neutrality is, but this is a big change. This is a, a, a a ruling that could have major impact on almost everyone in the United States. Why? Yeah, so the, the Trump administration, administration and FCC Chairman uh, Ajit Pai have rolled back the Obama-era net neutrality regulations based on the idea that it's better for the free market to decide. That uh, what we've seen over the last few years is broadband prices going down, uh, broadband speeds going up, and that's not due to net neutrality, it's due to, to competition. Um, there's also a general sense that if some of these telecoms become bad actors, that, uh, that there, is, there are already antitrust laws that they could be, um, they could be slapped with, and the net neutrality uh, guidelines that have been in place are actually overly um, burdensome to them and could potentially decrease the amount of investment that the telecoms will want to make into their own networks. So uh, that's what their argument is. There is, of course, the danger in that. The, our, the previous FCC chairperson, uh, Chairman um, Tom Wheeler, said that uh, net neutrality guidelines were there as a backstop in case you know, any of these companies started doing things like offering fast lanes to certain companies to give them a competitive advantage over others, which is anti-competitive, doesn't let the consumers decide which product they think is best on the open internet, which is the way the internet has always been, but instead lets then the, the telecoms sort of pick some of the winners and losers instead of consumers. That's the danger, and that's what's always been uh, behind this push for, for net neutrality to make sure that as we are in this area where increasingly the companies that control it, uh, control access to the internet are fewer and fewer and more powerful, that consumers don't lose out when uh, with the, the open internet um, being hampered um, by those big companies. So if you've dialed into the internet in the last couple of days, it's been almost impossible to see a lot of outrage about this. Um, but what's the, the reality? Will things change and how quickly will things change? Yeah, the thing is, is there really haven't been make many cases that we know of where people have been acting as bad actors. So a lot of what has been um, postulated about what could happen without net neutrality regulations have been what the enemies of net neutrality call just fear mongering, right? It's like none of this has ever happened. We have very few instances of it. And so, um, you know, the open market is, is leading um, the charge and, and is deciding that, okay, people still want an open and free network. So that's what the telecoms are providing. You know, whether that continues is an open question. One of the biggest cases that's often brought up as an example is Netflix. So Netflix uh, was one of the leaders of the charge for net neutrality in you know 2014 and um, several years since uh, because they were one that you know it was sometimes rumored that in the U.S. they were up to 30, 40 percent of all traffic was people streaming Netflix, right? And so, but they were streaming it over people, um, uh, over sorry companies that. Uh, we're losing out to Netflix, AT&T, Verizon, Comcast. And so uh, the idea was, well, those companies, they have it in their power to throttle Netflix because so, they don't want people watching video on Netflix. They want it watching on their on-demand services, right? Um, well, as it's played out, Netflix has cut deals with most of these big telecoms. And Netflix has even said recently that... Um, they haven't made a big stink about it this time because they've moved past it. They already have 
you know, deals in place with all of the telecoms to make sure that you know, they're paying their fair share for, for broadband, for, for um, internet, for carrier service, and then that the, they're getting fair access on all of those uh, networks. So there has been a lot made about the FCC and what seems to be kind of a unilateral decision, but there are other actors at play here. Yes. Uh, uh, what about Congress? What about the FTC and uh, uh, other government agencies? Uh, do they have something to say about this? Yes. So going forward, uh, with the FCC essentially taking a much smaller role, saying, you know, Jeet Pai saying, we want to let the market decide, um, you know, competition is really better. We have seen with Google Fiber coming to the market, that's had a bigger impact on this than any government legislation because that competition drives what consumers want, uh, which is that open internet. Uh, and so it's driving some of the other players in to, to move to, uh, to keep that. Um, but there still is the potential, uh, especially in markets where there isn't as much competition, that you know, those bad actors could emerge. So what happens then? Um, are sort of these worst case scenarios that, we've been, that have been put forward about net neutrality, could they still come into play? And we know that uh, there, there are a number of things that have happened. One, there's, a, there's the uh, antitrust um, legislation that's already on the books and regulation. So, if those companies do become bad actors, they could be hit, you know, the government could bring suit against them in that way. Um, the FTC is going to be taking a little bit stronger hand in the regulation of the internet as well, some of transferring some of it, the, the oversight from the FCC. Um, and then you still have the political climate, uh, which could change. Typically after a presidential year like 2016, um, there tends to be a bounce back um, from the uh, the opposite party, which in this case would be the Democrats, who are more pro-net neutrality. And so if the Democrats have a stronger legislative hold in 2018, um, there could be legislation passed in favor uh, of, of net neutrality or parts of it, this kind of legislating the open internet um, and putting some of those safeguards uh, in place. Because what's there now um, and what was uh, rolled back from the FCC are guidelines from the department, right, itself. They weren't laws put in place. They're using older laws that have been, um, that have been in the books, and they're deciding how to implement them, and they're implementing them in a way that, that uh, jives with this idea of net neutrality and legislating the open Internet. So it's really the beginning of a national dialogue about issues that affect consumers and business. And the internet, of course, is an issue that deeply affects consumers and business, as opposed to the end of that conversation. Uh, Jason, we have a lot of resources on Tech Republic and Tech Pro Research. Where can people get started learning about net neutrality? Yes, yeah, so there is a ton of stuff that you can read. Um, the, our cheat sheet on, uh, and smart person's guide on Tech Republic about net neutrality explains a lot of these concepts. Um, you can also read stories from um, both Tech Republic, ZDNet, um, as well as our sister site, CNET. Uh, we've covered this for years uh, in every detail. And so uh, you can go and see them there. And then you can also subscribe to Tech Republic's Top Story of the Day newsletter, where you can follow net neutrality and all the latest developments in the tech industry uh, and the stuff that matters for businesses and professionals. Yeah.